Hello everyone, this is Endgame Arts with another boxing with the offline party game review. This is Tenchu Lunar Knights for the PlayStation 4, but being played and tested on my PlayStation 5. To jump right into it, this physical copy here just comes with the base vanilla version of the game on disc, so 1.0, but sadly there was an update available. This update size was 100 megabytes big and will take you to version 1.02 since the time making this video. Now, like always, I play all my games completely offline with an unregistered account, and I didn't experience any massive game breaking bugs or issues and I fully completed 100% completed the game with my save file which is extremely nice to see and as well I was still unlocking trophies with my unregistered account. Now this is the first time I have any interaction with the Tenchu series or games. Now if you're not familiar Tenchu was from my understanding a shoot 'em up style game. Never played it, have no knowledge of the experience of what that game is but I just know it really exploded in Japan so I have no idea about the universe, I have no idea about the characters so please forgive me on that, I, just, I have no understanding of it. I just know it's really really popular and there's a lot of fan art. Now, if you've probably noticed, this physical copy is the Japan version of the game. At the time of this video, this is the only way, from my understanding, they'd be able to get the physical copy is importing them from Japan. Now, the game does support full English menus as well as English subtitles, so don't worry about that. But there could be a physical copy down the road for maybe PAL or America at some point. But at the time of this video, it's only available in Japan for a physical copy. Now, Throughout my experience, this Tenchu series, as I said, was, was a shoot 'em up style game. But this is a kind of like a spin off kind of story aspect where they turn into a Metrovania. It's definitely lower brow, lower budget, not as deep and rich as like other Metrovanias, but it does have some interesting sprite work and graphics, as well as I do like some interesting gimmickal designs they did with Times of Time, where you play as a character whose main ability is controlling time. But your mistress, your queen, if you will, may trap you in some video game that she's creating and she limits your powers so now you no longer have full control of time but you have a limited ability in time where you can either slow down time or completely stop time but throughout that you try to figure out what's going on and then as you, you try to figure out how to get out and you fight along bosses and so forth throughout this series of Tenchu. Now throughout my experience there wasn't any real issues. There was some spelling errors here and there. Nothing big, nothing crucial, but I know there are grammar Nazis out there and some people who great, get greatly offended if you get one spelling error or something like that. But overall it didn't affect the game. I knew what word they were trying to say so it didn't really affect me. Another one was interesting it was that the jumps uh, sliding in the game, you have to actually play like the old original Mega Man style where you have to push down and uh, uh, down and like slide, like j down and jump, which man, I was really hoping they could have a dedicated button for that because man, it, it is a little cumbersome to have to push down and jump and slide. It's not the most comfortable experience. It just seems like with all these buttons nowadays we have, we think you could man, easily made a dedicated button. As well as that, while the map is pretty good and it's pretty small and easy to traverse, uh, it is a little disappointing that there's not enough information on the map. Where it tells you, like, here, here's a secret, or here's this door that you, maybe it's locked, or the color of that door. That could have been really useful information to know how to, 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 to find hidden stuff that you maybe overlooked. Now, thankfully, the game isn't super long, or the map's not super big, so retracing your steps isn't too much of a hindrance but still i think the map could have had a little bit more information for players now also backtracking now this shouldn't be too much of a surprise because metrovanias definitely do have a tendency of backtracking but generally it is a rule of thumb where if you're going to a section to get a special ability usually that ability allows you to get out of that area really quickly but no in this game once you get that ability you have to backtrack all the way where you came from and go through all the stuff you just went through i don't know it, it bugged me a little bit as i said though the game isn't super long or nor is the map super big so it didn't last it didn't overstay its welcome in that annoyance, but I did notice it and was a little disappointed that the level design wasn't on point to make sure when you got that ability, there was some quick way to I mean, get through the area without having to run through all the enemies again. Now, this one, I don't know how to feel about this one. A small hitbox. Not not necessarily with the enemies, but for you. A lot of attacks may look like it's going to hit you, but you could straight up have like half your character covered with an orb attack and it won't hit you it's just very interesting i can see a lot of people who's maybe used to metrovanias with precision and this game allows the objects and hit, your hitbox is so small that you feel like you should be getting hit but no it's they've got a very small hitbox that can be a plus or a minus depending on how you think about it 
main equ equipment. This is a little annoying. Now, you have to have your inventory where you have all your pickups, your equipments, and weapons, and stuff like that. But you can't, like, decide which one to have equipped. They all are equipped at all times. So anytime you need to navigate through your equipment, you have to rotate through all of your equipment to find the one you want. It would have been nice if they had a menu to where you could choose what to equip. Because then not only do you have your weapons, you have your health potions, mana potions, time potions, as well and so on and so forth. So then you're going to have to go through all that equipment and resources to find the stuff you're interested in in your equipment slot. I think a little bit better design could have been done there. As well as that... Interestingly, the shop and gyms. This is an interesting one. The shop is, well, pretty useless. Now, granted, I know some people might step in there and say that's there's a lore reason and story-wise why it's kind of useless, but I, I don't want to go into that as spoilers. And besides, the store is meant to be there as a, like, a store. But the reason is, is that it doesn't really feel all that useful to spend money. Now, granted, the reason why that is is gyms. Gyms actually give you a... A passive buff if you gather enough of it so if you gather enough blue gems it increases your attack power you gather enough green gems it increases your defense now granted it's only small increments but small increments is still a lot if you can gather up a lot of gems so why would you ever want to spend money it just seems odd that the shop would have that kind of like thing trade-off to me i'd rather just get more and more powerful because i mean i get more gems all the time than spend money for a temporary potion you see what i'm saying like why you might as well just have the gems and have be very powerful and on top of that keep in mind the store not only is really useless the most expensive item in the game which is experience doesn't even give you enough to give you a level up yes i bought it and i bought two of them and it barely got me to the point of at the increment of about to get a level up so why why even bother don't why even bother buying anything at the shop as well as that i will want to mention i don't i don't know if this was ever like a dlc or if it was an update i'm not sure but there is a bonus stage and that bonus stage is on disc even though the game says it's 1.0 I've seen some people say it's DLC. I said some people it's maybe been like some kind of update. I'm not entirely sure, but regardless, that bonus stage is on disc and it's fully playable offline. So, I mean, that's a huge bonus there. That means that this, if this is not 1.0, then it's not, it's like a higher version. It just says 1.0. So regardless, you got the whole campaign story as well as you got that bonus stage. So, cool. Now that's about it. I know I sound like I said a lot of bad stuff, but I do want to point out I did have the game crash once on me. It was completely random, but nothing serious. Other than that, I mean, it's an interesting Metrovania. I know I sound like I said a lot of bad stuff. I just wanted to get a lot off my chest about certain aspects, but I did like the time stopping mechanic. And as well, I really, really enjoyed the boss battles. This is one of the few games where I actually ran through the boss uh, boss rush mode in the game. I don't normally touch that, that game mode, but this one, I like the fact that all your levels and experience does go into the boss rush. You don't have to restart back to square one. You can take all your upgrades and stuff like that and use it. I really like that so i was able to do the boss rush mode i was able to beat it and i really enjoy all the boss fights in the game really really good game it's it's definitely i, I don't know if i would call it a hidden gem because i mean it's got some drawbacks but i do like the time stopping ability i think that's very interesting not only is most games and metrovanias have anything to do with time like that it's just some temporary little thing as well it's only meant for like traversal while in this game it has a big impact in combat and utilizing it in many other areas in traversal so i think huge praise could go there for trying something new and doing something different much like the gyms i like how the gyms are a passive upgrade gathering up more gyms makes you get stronger so not only get experience you get the gyms as money and that gets you stronger as well again there's some cool elements here and there but I don't really think the level design and progression wise, I don't know if it felt very rewarding, but the boss fights as well as the sprite work and graphics and some minor traversal moments when you got to utilize the time ability are neat and I greatly enjoyed it. So in the end, I personally really enjoyed the game. I thought it was a very interesting Metrovania. I won't necessarily say it's one of my most favorite, but I do like some of its designs. I do like its boss battles. I do like its main time ability. I just think it's got some cool ideas and it's something I would definitely like to see a sequel to that can expand upon it and provide a bigger experience out of it. So like always, thank you all so much for watching. I will try to leave links down in the description if you're interested to copy. 
I say it's well worth it. Now, as I said, there could be another physical copy down the road that might get from like limited run, special reserve, who knows, name I am 8-bit, I don't know. Then maybe the American version will come through there or a PAL version that may come with updates on disc. I'm not sure. But right now, at the time of this video, this Japan version is the only way you can get it and it still ran perfectly be fine beginning to end with the bonus stage on disc as well. So. To me, you can't go wrong with that, so it's well worth a pickup if you're interested in Metrovanias and you're interested to see one do something a little bit different. So like always, again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next unboxing video. Bye-bye!